that, ladies and gentlemen, is a very beautiful sight. This, for those that don't know, is a Sega Genesis Model 1. In addition, this is a Sega Genesis 6 button controller. But you know what makes it all the more beautiful? I got this mean machine here and this unit here for 10 bucks. That's what makes it good. Now, why is the Sega Genesis Model 1 so good though? One reason this. A headphone jack. And at first glance, it does seem kind of weird that there'd be a headphone jack on a game console. On a TV, maybe on a computer, I guess. But on a game console? Yeah, they put it on here for whatever reason. I don't guess it matters. But the thing is, that means it'll output stereo sound. You just get one of those little, I think, eighth of an inch jacks or something. I can't remember exactly what it's called. But basically, this thing outputs stereo sound, whereas the other Genesis's do not. Now, I got this for 10 bucks, but I also got a couple of games. Isn't that wonderful? And why is it when something falls, it always falls behind the desk? Ugh. Anyway, I was able to find these couple of Genesis games for pretty cheap. I found this one with its simulant of a box for four bucks and each one of these loose one actually this one goes with that one these two and the one that fell behind there for about five bucks a piece and this one I think was three ninety nine yeah that's a joke <laughs> but hey if you buy a Sega Genesis you better bloody well buy a Sonic game well, specifically, the first. The main problem is, this thing did not come with AV cables. Instead, it came with an RF plug. The thing of it is, though, the RF plug it came with didn't work. Meaning, I had to fish out my old Super Nintendo one. Here's a bit of flame for you. It always seems that the Super Nintendo has to pick up the Genesis' slack. Now, the thing of it is, with my Super Nintendo, this is my original one from the 1990s. But, I no longer have my original Super Nintendo. Rather, I have one I bought maybe five years ago. The strange thing is, my original Super Nintendo basically disappeared. I'm talking alien abduction style, because... I lost that and all the games, but I still have the power supply, obviously the RF plug, and both controllers. Just the unit and the games are gone. It's like, what happened to it? If, if it disappeared, why didn't those two? Now, if you're wondering why there's a VCR here, I recorded a bit of footage off of the Genesis itself, but... As you can see here, this is a dazzle. It's a pretty big piece of junk, but as you can see, it does not have a RF connection. The thing about this, now that I think of it, is the main issue with it, and many will say it's just a piece of junk in and of itself, but the big issue with it is the software. The software will not work with a 64-bit machine, which is what my main computer is. So I have to run this through my laptop, and the software is just awful. It's almost defies description. Well, not really, but it's unbelievably basic, but also unbelievably annoying. I, I use a, I'm actually using a new editing suite made by Pinnacle, who also makes this thing. The editing suite is actually pretty decent in and of itself. It's just not very good as a general editor, mainly because you can't really hear anything on it, which hampers editing just a bit, but that's immaterial. It does let me use this with my main computer, and that is infinitely more convenient. The thing of it is, though, it now saves my files as massive. And I do mean massive files. I mean, if I remember correctly, it's like 18 megabytes per second, and I still haven't figured out how to fix that. I mean, this thing would save it at least using the software that came with it as a VOB file, which, of course, can't actually be read by anything. But the VOM files at least were fairly small. 
in comparison with the files it's out exporting now. I mean, you can't record five, mi five minutes and have it be like 12 gigabytes. Even converting it to a smaller file format, it's still far too large. Although, I will say the video quality has improved considerably. Now, <clears throat> the way I am actually able to record from an RF plug is using the VCR here. Uh, basically, all you have to do is you plug the RF plug into the antenna in, run the two component cables into this, and basically that's it. It's fairly easy. So after that obvious jump cut, I was able to rescue my wayward game from behind my desk. What we have here is Zero Tolerance, one of the very few first-person shooters on the Genesis. The game itself is extremely playable. The graphics are fairly good, and really, in some ways, it's kind of superior to Wolfenstein 3D. You get blood on the walls, and you can crouch, and I think you can jump, although don't hold me to that. The game itself features instances of voice acting. Like every time you pick up a pistol, it'll say, Pistol Collected, or you pick up a shotgun, it'll say, Shotgun Collected. The problem with that? It gets pretty annoying really fast, but still, the idea that a game like this is on the Genesis is pretty amazing. In fact, it does not have as much slowdown as you would imagine. In fact, I think it actually runs smoother than Jurassic Park. Now, you may be wondering, why buy a Genesis at all? Why not just emulate it? As it is easier to record off emulators than it is the real console. Well, for one, some of the original games will differ from the ROM somewhat. This one here is a good example of it. Although, personally, I haven't seen it, but I have read in places that the last level on the ROM differs significantly from the real cartridge. Also, I've heard that some of the tracks are different as well. But really, that's not a reason, is it? The fact is, it's just good to own the real console and own the real games. There's just something about having the real cartridge that you don't get with a ROM. With a ROM, it's just data, but here, this is a real game, you know? You can feel it, you can put it in the real console, it's just... It's just indescribable, I guess. Also, for anyone that's wondering, this is not complete, as it doesn't have the instruction manual, but it does have the actual box, and really, is it worth it? I guess. You can look at the back here. It's supersonic! Wait, I don't think that actually took place until like Sonic 3, I think, when he turned into the gold one. Let's see here. Super speed! Bust the video game speed barrier wide open. I didn't know there was one. With Sonic the Hedgehog blaze by in a blur using the supersonic spin attack. You mean the spin dash? I didn't think that came out till Sonic 2 as well. Loop the loop by defying gravity, plummet down tunnels, then dash to safety with Sonic's power sneakers. Ooh! All at a frenzied pace. Well, actually, as I recall, you actually have to slow down a bit. Super graphics. Help Sonic escape bubbling molten lava. Swim through turbulent waterfalls. Scale glistening green mountains. And soar past shimmering city lights. There's even a 360 degree rotating maze. You've never seen anything like it. Now I have to say that I have. Sonic has an attitude that just won't quit. He's flip and funny. I don't recall him saying anything. He just runs fast, yet tough as nails. Hopefully they're titanium nails, because iron nails aren't all that tough. As he f fights to free his friends from evil. I thought that said fights, but it doesn't. So just wait. Sonic may be the world's next superhero. Hilarious. But needless to say, Sonic was a pretty good game. And once again, that's a pretty big joke right there. Not for resale, huh? Maybe 20 years ago, but not anymore. Now, it's enough just staring at the console. Let's put in something and take a look. But before we do, I have to question, why is it that in a lot of videos, people do this? They take the game, put it in there, and turn it on. It's not plugged in, but 
what's the point? It doesn't matter if you emulate it or not. I mean, clearly, people just want to see the game. They don't really care if you really put it in the main unit or not. Nobody's going to go, that's emulated. Well, some might, but still. Who cares? Peer pressure.